Hey everybody, welcome back to Mass Basement Workshop Podcast. I have a special episode today because I'm actually at the Woodcraft uh, Vendors and Dealers Show and I'm going to be demonstrating what's called a Milescraft Pantograph. In fact, actually it's this router pantograph right here. And this is really neat because if you're familiar with any of the sign making stuff, you're really kind of limited on the templates that you can do. And I've had a chance to actually play with this one, the, the router pantograph, and you can do a ton of it. In fact, actually let me show you a couple of the things that I've made before, which includes like this sign right here, and this is actually a uh, font that comes with it. Uh, you can do line drawings, which are actually a lot of fun because, you know what, you can pull stuff off the internet. Hey, you can even download my logo if you want to. I recommend everybody have a logo of mine that you uh, go ahead and play with on the panel. If we should make the, actually, I should talk to the guys, maybe we can get that included in the kit. Uh, but you can do stuff like, you know, these squirrels come in there, downloaded the acorn. Um, let's see, we can pull off a... Uh, Here's a font that we just pulled right off of the text editor. If any of you might recognize this one from uh, Apple's text editor. You know, and it's just, you can do so many different things with it. So let's go ahead and head on over to the actual uh, pantograph itself and well, let's take a look at it. Okay, so we got a close up of it. And when it comes down to it, this is essentially the pantograph. We've got the two arms and attached to the longest arm is this stylus. And I'm gonna bring you in and show you in just a second what it actually looks like. But the router itself is supported in this tray and this tray can accommodate a wide assortment of routers. Now I prefer to use a plunge router with this but you can actually use a fixed base router if necessary and it's these two little clamping arms right here that hold it down. Now essentially they're just carriage bolts with wing nuts. Now you've got the articulating joints back here and here and that's what allow it to move around and what we're going to do is let me just move this out of the way real quick and this just pops up and this is how the whole thing is supported. Now I have it on a 48 by 20 inch long piece of plywood and that's my main table that I have for it. I have the support fence and then an auxiliary support fence and then these great little clamps, these little wedges that actually hold the piece in place. And what we end up doing is, however wide the piece is, we actually move this down about two, three, two and three eighths inch and we get it in place perfectly and that's how we do it. So now we know what it looks like. Let's go ahead and actually route a sign with it. Now I've got the first letter in place for the letter wood, or for the word wood, and we're gonna go ahead and actually route out the rest of them. So let's do that next. And like I said, this is really, really simple. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we've already got that W in place, and I wanna now space it over for the O. So what I'm gonna do is Located here on the template is a spacing dot and a locating dot. And these are only on the included font. If you're gonna do it with one that you take off the uh, internet, well, you're gonna have to figure it out yourself. So I've got that dot marked because what I'm gonna do is I put it right over the top of where it's supposed to be. I'll reach in there with a pencil, mark it. Now that that wedge is loosened, I'm actually going to remove this one grab the next letter that I want, which is the O. That's in place because what I did is I stacked all my letters. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move this over from the spacing dot to the locating dot. And once that's in place, the next thing is to re-wedge it. And I'll make sure I try to get a good clip of us re-wedging it. That's in place. Okay, I've got that ready. Now we're ready to go ahead and actually route the next letter. So I'm gonna lift this up, move it over. And we're gonna slowly work our way around the outside. The idea here is not to have the stylus on the piece, but actually just a little bit above it. And we're gonna use our hands to control this. So we're making our way around. And we're back at our starting spot. Now, we need to do the interior of the O. So I'm gonna lift this up. I'm gonna start 
Get the stylus over a starting point. We'll drop it. And we're now ready. So we're going to follow the inside now. And that's done. So the next thing we need to do is, well, obviously we're gonna to wanna to move it over because you know what, there's two O's in wood. So we'll put it over the spacing dot. We're gonna mark it. We're gonna loosen the wedges. Make sure they're nice and loose. We'll move it over to the locating. And again, because we're gonna be using the same O, we don't need to move this. And so we're now going to start it up and we'll reroute the O. Okay, so I hope it goes without saying that it's pretty obvious we've sped up the footage here. I really wish that I was this prolific with the router pantograph that I could just zip along in no time at all. But the fact is, the slower, steadier hand gets much better results with this. Even if you had a little time in the saddle, when it comes down to it, you, you definitely, I recommend everybody take their time when they're using this. But like I said, after a while, you, you'll kind of pick up the nuances and you'll notice it does speed up a little bit. Now, when it comes to the profiles that I use for the routers, I prefer something very, very simple. In fact, what I'm doing for the majority of this show and what I had done in my test ones is I used Whiteside's V-Groove bit. I, I liked it because varying the depth gives me a different shadow line so that it could be a little bit wider or it could be basically just scratching the surface. And I really liked the results I got from it. Now, is it the only one you should use? No, I've used the core box bit with it and gotten really great results. While at the show, we actually also used a straight cutting bit and it turned out fantastic. We really liked that one too. One thing I would recommend is to keep the uh, profiles uh, narrower if you get to really large profiles you actually start to lose a great bit of detail and that's also true for the depth of cut the deeper you go the wider the shadow line is going to be and it, it, you can start to lose some of that detail now as i had mentioned beforehand when it comes to using the different fonts like i said i found one um in my text editor uh, on, on my computer and i just simply typed out the word that i wanted and i was able to get really great results with it uh you can use a you can use coloring books for some of the line drawings. In fact, that was one thing I had mentioned was like, you know, uh, as a dad, when my, my daughter was younger, she was really huge into the Disney princesses. And there's no way in the world I could have done carvings of those. I'm just not that prolific with carving chisels. So using something like this would have made it very easy to create a really decorative headboard or a box or whatever it is that she wanted with those line drawings on it. Now, you'll notice on the arms themselves, there's some holes there, and they represent the fact that you can get a 40% reduction, a 50% reduction, or a 60% reduction of the original size. In fact, what we're doing here is a 60% reduction. And if you know the basic percentage, it's very easy to figure out what size you want to do. You just multiply it by the percentages. Really simple math, and you know it, it goes rather quickly. Now, a couple more things I just happen to want to mention. When I'm using the router, just like when I'm using any of my tools, because that, that router tray is rather a large surface, one thing I like to do is apply a little a little wax on the bottom, just like I do with my hand planes, uh, just like I do sometimes with my planer bed and stuff like that. Uh, that wax makes it just that much easier to run along the surface. And for the stylus, since the, the direction that we're looking at it, it almost looks like I'm going out around this, the edges and everything and not getting very good. But you, when you're looking down at the stylus, uh, you can see exactly where it's going to be. So it's much easier for the user's point of view to get better results. And one more thing about the stylus, don't let it run on the surface of the, uh, the board that you're working on. Keep it just above it. And that's it. All right, and there's the final product. We'll definitely make sure we get a picture of that in there. And this is just one of the possible fonts that you can do with this. A couple different options, of course, we have this at a 60% reduction. You can do 40 or 50, however big or small you want it. And you can even go in and rather than just outlining, you can remove the rest of this material and make a completely different look. And like I said, you don't